WIM F1H2 World Championship season headed to the Far East and the People's Republic of China, where Xiang Yang hosted its first ever Grand Prix, round four of the 2018 season. Situated in Hubei province, the ancient city of Xianyang dates back 5,000 years, and the traces of its illustrious past can be seen all around today as a city of over 2 million inhabitants blends a rich and proud cultural heritage with a thriving modern feel that bridges five millennia of history, filled with temples, botanical gardens, universities, and a thriving social, commercial, and cultural life. Formerly known as Xiang Fun, Xiang Yang has a vibrant, outward-looking youth that adds a cultural dynamism to the city, which has some of the biggest movie studios in the People's Republic, and it's considered to be the Hollywood of China. The Han River, which is a branch of the mighty Yangtze River, runs through Xiang Yang, acting as the commercial, social, cultural, and political lifeblood of the city and the region over countless centuries, and it continues to play an important place in modern Xiang Yang. The Han River would host the 24th UIM F1H2O event in China over the last 17 years, as tens of thousands gathered along its shores to watch the agile Grand Prix of Xiang Yang unfold getting a close-up of the boats, the drivers, and the action, with those brave enough taking a spin in the H2O two-seater. Now let's see what happened in the previous race. In round three in Evian, France, Eric Stark was on a roll after his round two win in London, and he once again took pole position to lead the race from the start on Lac Le Mans. But he was under intense early pressure from his Team Abu Dhabi teammate, Daniel Kamzi. Mad Croc Baba racer Philip Roms crashed out in lap eight, the first yellow flag of the race, but Stark held off Al Kamzi on the restart with Francesco Cantando third and round one winner Sean Torrente moving up early to fourth position. The four racing line astern until the second yellow flag 13 laps later as Alex Corella crashed out. On the second restart, Torrente and Eric Eden passed Cantando, who eventually retired. Stark closed out an impressive second Grand Prix win in a row, with his Team Abu Dhabi teammates Al Kamzi and Torrente joining him on the podium for an unprecedented single team podium. Eric Eden capping a great race with fourth, Peter Marin finishing fifth, Anderson coming up from 18th to finish the race sixth. And so Team Abu Dhabi led the world team standings going into Xiang Yang with all three Team Abu Dhabi drivers dominating the world standings. Eric Stark on top, Al Kamzi second, Torrente third, and CTIC China drivers Xiap and Marin fourth and fifth. There were 19 drivers from nine teams competing at the Agile Grand Prix of Xiangyang with hometown heroes CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team hoping to get the support of the crowds behind them as their two French drivers, three-time world champion Philippe Schiap and his teammate Peter Morin, try to win their first Grand Prix of the year for the team. Very, very important on this season because it's a race home and uh, we have special uh, pressure here and uh, we are very happy to, to race. China and the new place, Yang Yang is a very nice city and uh, the tracks feels good and everything is ready. No, we are very happy. Xiap and Marin were fourth and fifth in the world standings going into Xiang Yang, and the biggest barrier in their way was mighty Team Abu Dhabi. With all three of its drivers locking down the top three spots of the world standings after an unprecedented 1-2-3 in the last Grand Prix in Evian, Team Abu Dhabi led the world. <laughs> Oh! 
world team standings 24 points clear of CTIC China going into round four, with all three rounds so far having been won by their current driver lineup. The man leading the world standings after brilliant back-to-back -back Grand Prix wins in London and Evian is Eric Stark, the newest addition to the team. The Swedish ace is going for his third Grand Prix win in a row in China, a feat last achieved by Scott Gilman 14 years ago. Round 1 winner in Portimao, Sean Torrente of the USA was second in the world standings going into Xiangyang with their fellow teammate Taniel Kamzi in third. Led by legendary 10-time F1H2O world champion Guido Capellini, they truly are the team to beat. Based on our results and what we've done this year and our data that we have, we feel it's pretty good. So our, our, our spirits are high for the race for all three boats. Um, obviously the goal is just for Abu Dhabi to be in the front. doesn't matter which boat, but one of us needs to be in the front. There have been some radical changes in Victory Team with brand new boats designed and built for their two aces Ahmed Al Hamali and four-time and defending world champion Alex Carella, both of whom are looking to overturn their misfortune and series of crashes for Carella. After Avion we had the break between here and uh, then we had a couple months so we went back to Victory, we built two new boats try to understand you know what was the problems and hopefully here we have it figured out. It's the first year that Victory is really building a boat with a lot of effort and I don't think it'll take long for us to, to get back to the top. Also changes for the former Team Sweden which is now Team Amaravati as the capital of Andhra Pradesh prepares for its first ever Indian UIM F1H2O Grand Prix in round 5. For sure it's a big opportunity for us to have the team Amavarati, it's going to mean a lot to uh, compare so we can be more strong to the other teams and uh, it's very nice with the, we go to a new country and uh, I think it's going to be a fantastic season. Five-time Grand Prix winner Jonas Anderson races with Eric Eden, who's been having a great season so far, qualifying in fifth in London, finishing fourth in Evian and in sixth place in the title race going into Xiangyang. Team Maverick have a new lineup with Cedric De Guin's team welcoming Thai racer Sukbongbang Sutipan, who replaces Mette Bjerknes. No changes in lineups for the other teams. Sammy Celio and Philip Roms of Mad Croc Baba looking to salvage what they can from 2018 and overcome their engine troubles. F1 Atlantic's Duarte Benevente and Grat Trask looking to add to their team points. Moritz Stromoy and Bartek Marshalek in Emirates Racing trying to improve on their recent consistency. And Francesco Cantando looking to continue his improvement for Blaze Performance alongside teammate Simone Schuft. The seven pin circuit in Xiangyang is over two kilometers long and unique in that it features not one but two yellow right hand turns, making this a tricky and technical course on a flowing freshwater river. Like this course with the two right-handers is very special. I never had it even in Formula 2, so it's going to be really tough to find out the best way to, to handle it. The BRM official qualifying would be contested over three sessions. The field reduced to 12 after Q1, then down to six after Q2. In Q3, those six boats would go out one by one to lay their fastest times in a bid for pole position. In Q1, Matt Croc Baba Racing Team's chances for a turnaround of fortune were dashed as both two-time world champion Sammy Celio and his teammate Philip Roms were unable to make it into Q2. Struggling with the setup and uh, I don't know, engine setup or prop setup, but we need to figure it out. We couldn't just manage to have the speed at all. I'm a little bit surprised. It was a spirited fight from Bartek Marshalek after recent technical issues, but the Polish ace was unable to repeat his qualifying success of recent Grand Prix out in Q1. It was a fight to the end between F1 Atlantic driver Duarte Benevente and Team Amaravati's Eric Eden. And although the Portuguese veteran pushed hard till the end, it was the young Swede who just made the Q2 cut by three hundredths of a second, along with place performance driver Francesco Cantando. Also out in Q1 were Maverick F1 drivers Cedric De Guin and Sukpong Bang Sutipan and Simone Schiff, the Blaze performance. Francesco 
Francisco Cantando's hopes of continuing his recent improvement in form were dashed after just six laps when he had to pull out of qualifying. While Eric Eden and Moritz Stromoy also had disappointing runs, Stromoy's excellent form going into Q2 cut short with engine issues. We lost a lot of engine power. Out of every corner I had like five cylinders and I don't know what it is, but we have a major engine issue. So really disappointing because we would have been super fast for sure. The session was a tightly fought one with mere tenths of a second separating drivers on the tight and technical circuit. While Philip Schiaf and all three Team Abu Dhabi drivers laid down good lap times to lead the session, there was a tough four-way battle between Grant Trask, Alex Carella, Peter Morin and Ahmed Al Hamili for the Q3 cut. Al Hamili needed just seven laps to nail a 56.66 second lap time, which the other drivers had to beat. Defending and four-time world champion Alex Carella didn't find the speed he needed in his new victory boat, a surprise exit from the Italian ace. Morin and Trask were also unable to beat Al Hamili. The man who stole the show was Jonas Anderson, who rocketed through to qualify first from Q2, leapfrogging Team Abu Dhabi, Stark Torrente and Al Kamzi. Q3, six boats left, with each driver having two laps apiece and the course all to themselves to lay their fastest time in pursuit of pole position. First out onto the course in Q3 was Ahmed Al Hamili of Victory Team. After an aborted first run, the Emirati Multiple Grand Prix winner did well on his second attempt, 56.06, but would it be enough? Next out was three-time world champion Philip Schiap, but the Frenchman struggled, unable to beat Al Hamili. Schiap's time of 56.36, leaving him out of the running for pole. Tani Al Kamzi was the first of the Team Abu Dhabi trio to hit the circuit in Q3, and he was flying out there. His first lap of 55.82, ensuring provisional pole before he beat that with an even better lap time of 55.04 on his second go. Eric Stark went out next, and the round two and three winner proved once again to be incredibly fast, nailing it with a scorching 54.76 lap time to snatch provisional pole from his teammate. Now, could Sean Torrente go one better? Torrente was immaculate on the day as yet another Team Abu Dhabi driver beat his teammate to claim provisional pole with a huge 54.51 second lap time. That left just one man, the fastest man in Q2, Team Amaravati's Jonas Anderson. Despite improving on his second run and also getting under the 55 second marker, his time of 54.89 was only good enough to seal third place. And so, pole position for the agile Grand Prix of Xiangyang went to Sean Torrente, with his teammate Eric Stark second, Anderson third, then Tani Al Kamzi fourth. Al Hamili and Shiab start fifth and sixth. I feel great, man. So much work for the team. I, you know, the team is amazing. I, it really is. Um, you know, I'm just a kid that uh, grew up in Miami, wanted to race boats, and I get to race for a 10 time world champion. I get to race on the best team. I'm really just blessed overall, you know. I'm so happy. And then we finish tomorrow. As the day's competition wound down, the UIM F1H2O family was welcomed to Xiangyang in style with a sumptuous gala dinner and a feast of live performances, music and festivities as drivers, crews and families left the day's worries behind them and celebrated the 24th UIM F1H2O Grand Prix in China. Race day. Things got off to a disastrous start for Blaze performance as both Cantando and Simone Schuft suffered extensive damage on their boats, forcing them out of the race. Schuft lost control on the straight in official practice. <laughs> flipping over. I was on the straight 
I was fast and maybe I was a little bit too high because at the end of the straight uh, was a small wind or whatever or wave and uh, I flipped. Um, we tried it but I think the boat is bo broken and uh, so I think I have to stop today. Home team CTICF1 Shenzhen China needed podium results here to stay in the title race. We start uh, in sixth position. For sure I do make a good start and push on the maximum. Uh, and uh, if it's possible to get the podium, it's a good result. Seventeen drivers lined up on the start pontoon, ready for the fourth Grand Prix race of the year. The pressure was on and the teams were raring to go. Racing uh, today is going to be nice, big course, a lot of fighting, and, uh, fast race. I feel good, I fixed some problems today in the morning, I was fastest on practice. It's nice weather, nice race course, let's have fun. The starting lineup, Sean Torrente in pole position after a brilliant BRM qualifying run, his teammate Stark to his right, then Jonas Anderson for Team Amaravati in third, and another Abu Dhabi driver, Tani Al Kamzi, fourth. Al Hamali and Shiap start fifth and sixth. Morin in seventh, Corella eighth, Eden down in tenth ahead of Stromoy. Celio starts back in 15th. Team Mavericks Thai newcomer Sutipan Sukbongbong and De Guin starting at the end of the pontoon as the agile Grand Prix of Xiangyang was about to get underway. The team to beat, Team Abu Dhabi. We know we're going to take care of each other, we trust each other. So, um, you know, we'll have a clean run to the first corner and hopefully we can be 1 2 coming out of that corner. And from there, we uh, just manage the race and then go for it. Final preparations complete, the seconds tick away, the lights go out and the race is on. The Team Abu Dhabi fleet off to a good start, Al Kamzi fast off the pontoon, speeding past Jonas Anderson with Stark pulling away to his left. Bartek Marshalek nudges ahead of Duarte Benevente and moves up beside his teammate Moritz Stromoy. First to the commitment buoy is the man in pole, Sean Torrente, and his two teammates Stark and Al Kamsley push past Anderson as the race starts with a Team Abu Dhabi triumvirate leading from the first turn. It's been a poor start from victory ace Ahmed Al Hamali, who dropped from fifth as Shia passed him to move up a place behind Anderson. Smooth clear waters on the Han River as the Team Abu Dhabi boats dominate the race with Torrente in the lead and Al Kamzi in second position just a nose ahead of Stark in third. Bartek Marshalek ups the pace as he speeds past Peter Morin on the outside, the Polish driver moving up to eighth. Meanwhile Celio moves back up to overtake F1 Atlantic driver Benevente after losing position to the Portuguese driver earlier. Behind the three lead boats, a battle for fourth position heats up with Shiap on the rampage trying to wrest fourth spot from Team Amaravati's Jonas Anderson, but the Swedish ace fends off the Shiap challenge for now. Toward the back of the field, Sammy Celio and Cedric de Guin lock horns. Back to the lead boats and Torrente opens that gap with his teammate but Alkamzi and Stark are still neck and neck and Anderson and Shiap are close behind them as the top five break away. Behind that lead peloton, Ahmed Alhamali feels Bartek Marshalek breathing down his neck. The Polish driver is on the warpath with the top six in his sights. Further back, four-time and defending world champion Alex Carella of Victory Team in the number one boat is having a miserable start to the race, struggling back there, as is yet another multiple world champion Sami Celio of Mad Croc Baba. Team Amaravati's Eric Eden passes CTIC driver Peter Morin to move up into 10th position behind Emirates Racing's Moritz Stromoy. As the first lap of 39 is completed, Team Abu Dhabi maintain their dominance, locking out the top three, and the battle continues behind them as Shiap continues to dog Jonas Anderson, looking for a way past the wily Swede. Just two laps in, and lead driver Sean Torrente already lapping the back markers as he finds the clear waters to get past Thai driver Suk Bong Bong. The test for the lead boats will be how well they can navigate the back markers without losing pace or encountering any mishaps. A close call there in lap three as Eric Eden tries to slip past Moritz Stromoy and the two near. <laughs>
briefly collide. Peter Marin takes advantage, zips through on the inside to move into 10th behind Stromoy. Peter Marin, who is in fifth position in the world standings going into Xiangyang, pushes to catch Marit Stromoy. The Norwegian herself trying to catch her teammate Bartek Marshalek up ahead as the drama continues in the middle of the pack. Seven laps into the race and the dogfight continues between Shep and Anderson, the French CTIC driver and three-time world champion not letting up in his pursuit of the Swede in the red Amaravati boat. But Anderson has the pace to hold point. The fight for eighth place also continues into lap nine as Peter Marin pursues the two Emirates racing drivers, Stromoy and Marsalek. Peter Marin has had an excellent season so far with a podium in London and two top five finishes in Portimao and Evian. He wants to keep the good times rolling here in Xiangyang. Duarte Benevente is out in lap 12 of the race. Engine problems for the F1 Atlantic veteran. As Torrente opens a nearly minute-long gap with his Team Abu Dhabi teammates in second and third, the battle continues for fourth between Anderson and Schiap and a battle for eighth place between Stromoy, Marshalek and Morin. Meanwhile, Alex Carella's dismal season fails to improve in Xiangyang, the Italian victory driver out a lap later as his hopes for a world title defense evaporate. Mad Croc Baba racing team season is no better as Celio once again retires from the race and his hope of a turnaround in 2018 sink in the waters of the Han River. What's the engine or gearbox? We don't know yet, but it's technical failure. As they lap the Thai Maverick driver, Shiap sees a chance to take Anderson on the long straightaway, but Anderson puts the pedal to the metal and holds on to fourth place with dear life. On lap 20, Bartek Marshalek spins out on the turn and his campaign takes a big blow. The Polish driver's still in it, but it costs him as he drops from 8th position to 11th. There it is from Eric Edens on board. The young Swede quick to avert, smashing into Marshalek as he steers around him. That puts Marit Stromoy up into 8th and she is bearing down on F1 Atlantic's Grant Trask as Stromoy makes a move to try and wrest 7th place from the Australian driver. Into lap 24 of 39 and nobody has been able to put a dent in Team Abu Dhabi's lead as Guido Capellini's fleet keeps a firm grip on the top 3. F1 Atlantic's Grant Trask is also out. Shame for the Aussie driver who was going strong in seventh. And Moritz Stromoy moves up yet another spot in her climb up the field. Torrente maintains that nearly one minute lead. Alcamzi still just ahead of Stark. Anderson in fourth and being chased race long by Shiap with Al Hamily consistent in sixth as we go into the last eight laps. Shiap now knows the laps are running out, desperate for some slim chance of slipping past Anderson, but the Swede is making no mistakes out there. The five-time Grand Prix winner using his experience to hold off the Frenchman. There it is, what a race! A start to finish dominance from Sean Torrente and yet another Team Abu Dhabi 1-2-3 podium lockdown. Sean Torrente with his second Grand Prix win of 2018. Daniel Kamsi runner-up for the third of four races this season. And Eric Stark on the podium yet again in third. What a team effort it's been as Team Abu Dhabi extend their dominance of the world team standings this year. A tenacious run from Jonas Anderson earns the Team Amaravati driver a well-earned fourth place as he successfully fends off a race-long challenge from Philip Schiap who finishes fifth with Al Hamily earning crucial points for victory. I lost one position but uh, you know losing to Tani was, was a good man to lose it to you know. I'm very happy for the team you know one two three that's, that was our main goal. Happy to finish you know podium always good I'm happy. I feel very happy today. We win uh, the race, uh, all the teams, uh, first and second and third. I'm leading, but I need to continue until India and Abu Dhabi, Sharjah. After we see. A second podium shutdown for Team Abu Dhabi puts them 50 points in the lead of the world. <laughs> oh, 
overall team standings with CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team in second position on 64 points and Team Amaravati in third just a few points up on Victory and Maverick F1 Racing. I feel amazing. Um, it was such a great result for the team again. All their hard work has really paid off. You know, we come to China, we finish first, second, and third again, and this is because of all the work that they do. So I'm blessed to be able to run the to drive them probably one of the most amazing boats ever in the history of our sport. And I'm blessed to have great teammates. Um, we're all in a heat, dead heat for the championship. Uh, Tani leads by two points over me and one over Eric. So it's basically anybody's deal for the end of the year. And uh, hopefully it's one of us, that's the goal. In the driver world standings, only two points separate the three Abu Dhabi aces. The man on top being Tani Al Kamzi, who despite not having won a Grand Prix in 2018, has shown that consistency is key. Stark in second position and Torrente third ahead of Shiap going into round five in Amaravati, India. As the UIM F1H2O flag passes to Amaravati in the state of Andhra Pradesh, India, that concludes an incredible first ever UIM F1H2O Grand Prix in Xiangyang. See you in round five in India.